Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today we're gonna to walk you through the configuration of our Lotus Samira. Now we're using a screen recording system here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start screen recording so we can show you exactly what's being displayed on the screen. You'll see me switching between different options um, to show the background for the Lotus as we do the configuration. And that's because there's a glitch in the software in the actual on the web page. Um, it doesn't show the options. It doesn't update the options unless you switch between the different um, daylight, sunlight, and studio options. You switch between one or two of the others, and it will update. So you'll see me do that. It's not because I'm trying to cause a problem with regards to the recording or anything it's, it's just that that's what you have to do because there's a glitch in the in the software on the on the Lotus and Mira page so bear with me on when, when I do those make those changes but it'll be quite obvious so you can see here in the configurator you've got two options you've got first edition and you've got base edition now first edition is the is as, it, as the name suggests, as everybody knows, it's the first edition of the Lotus Amira. This is the version that's been delivered. Well, it's actually supposed to be already delivered, but it's been delayed because of issues with um, parts and parts being manufactured, as, which, is, which is a problem for all car manufacturers at the moment. With, with regards to the options on the screen, you've got the option to configure the first edition. The base edition shows on there, and the base edition is in effect a cut down version or the base version and base configurable version of the Lotus Amira that will be available um, 2023. You can't use that option yet. You've got the first edition option and the first edition is called as such uh, because it is the first edition and because there's preset items and options for this first edition, which obviously means that you're paying more for a first edition than you would for a base edition. The difference is that the first edition you're getting a lot of the options that you're likely to want configured on the car. And these options, because you're a first adopter or because you're an early adopter, you're going to get these options a, a little bit cheaper. So it actually is, it is more efficient and more beneficial financially to actually choose the first edition if you're going to go for those options anyway. And I would go for those options anyway, so a first edition suits me. And obviously for the channel, we want to get a first edition as soon as possible. So that's why we've ordered the car early to get a first edition, notwithstanding everybody's orders have slipped and it's well publicized why again because of the, the issue with getting parts you can't actually configure a base edition yet because it's not available until 2023 so even though it says base edition on the home screen you can't actually choose that option so let's go into the first edition configuration as you can see here it defaults to Seneca blue we we're not going to choose Seneca blue one of the key things is we wanted a vibrant color for the channel we wanted a color that's going to look vibrant on camera I just go through and configure uh, the options that in my heart I'd like to choose with regards that if I was choosing this car purely for myself and you know for, for our family for myself and my son um, so we quick I'll, and I'll quickly go through this so you can quickly see the the, the options that I will choose so I will choose v6 supercharged uh, for the engine I would choose six speed manual and I would choose the sport suspension. With regards to the paint, again, this is what I would choose in my heart, not the options that we've gone for. I would choose dark verdant for the color. It has actually changed there to dark verdant. I didn't have to switch the different background options. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I would choose dark verdant as the, as the base color for the car. I would choose full black pack because it breaks up and it makes the car look slimmer although it is quite slim anyway. Um, then with regards to wheels, I would choose ultra lightweight V-spoke forged alloys. And with regards to calipers, I would choose yellow calipers. Um, then with regards to the interior, again, I'm just going through this very quickly just to show you what I would choose if I was choosing it personally for a car for myself. I would choose tan interior. And with regards to the steering, uh, so I would choose a tan interior and with regards to steering wheel, I would choose a black leather trimmed steering wheel. So pretty much this is the options that I would choose. And if we go into the video, it will show you the specification of the car here. And you can see it looks stunning. It's, it's a beautiful specification. And this is, I suspect, predominantly the configuration that most people will be choosing for this car. Now, why aren't I choosing that configuration? Well, one problem, the car looks black in 99% of the time, 
that dark verdant color, although beautiful when the sun is beaming right on it, on a particular panel, otherwise it looks black. Now, a black car with regards to showing on the channel, with regards for a YouTube channel, um, just doesn't come across anywhere near as well as a more vibrant color. So even though I'd love to go dark verdant, yellow calipers with those bright silver wheels and a tan interior, in other words, green over tan, which is the definitive beautiful option, it's not gonna come across very well on the channel. And when you see the car on the channel, you will totally get it and you will totally understand why. And the car will show up wherever we are. So with the options that I'm gonna choose, which I'm gonna go through with you now. So we'll scrap this now, but that's the option that originally I would have chosen if I was purchasing the car just for myself and my son. But because we're buying a car um, for as a, as a YouTube car, um, predominantly as a YouTube car to create content for the YouTube channel and to create content for you guys. Um, the pain we go through, eh? <laughs> so I'll show you the configuration now. Um, I'll just reset this and go back so I can show you the configuration and how we would actually uh, choose the car for the channel. So we're back on the screen now. If we just scroll down to configure, it's a bit clunky, this configuration. And there you can see we're back at the home page now where we can configure the first edition. So go quickly back into the configure first edition. So now let's go through the various different options. First of all, I'm going to change it to sunlight because the sunlight backdrop, which finally when it picks up, there we go, uh, that actually shows the car um, in a better light specifically um, and with better surroundings. So you can better see the configuration of the car. Hopefully I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to have to switch between daylight and sunlight too much to bring up the um, configuration options that I'll be choosing. So first of all, if we're going to powertrain, <clears throat> Now the powertrain I'm going to choose is V6 Supercharge. Okay, so why am I going to go for V6 Tube Supercharge? Because again, this is a YouTube car and because I would choose V6 Supercharged anyway. It's just a cooler option. It sounds better. Um, the i4 turbocharged options, uh, which is an AMG engine. Yeah, it's great and it's been, sh it's been proven to produce um, quite a bit more horsepower than it will be configured for the e Emira to begin with anyway. Um, but it's a four pot, it's not as cool as a V6, it's not gonna sound as good as a V6 in my opinion. And even though people say it's eminently configurable and more configurable than the, than the Toyota V6, the problem is they've tuned it down because in the configuration where it will be mid-engine placed in the, in the, as a mid-placed in the car in the Amira, they haven't got enough cooling to keep it cool enough with regards the tuning that you could put on the car to increase its performance. So they've tuned it down so that they can cool it properly so it will be stable. Now, if anybody tunes this engine forward without any changes in, in the configuration of the bodywork of the car to aid cooling, they're gonna perceivably into problems of overheating and you know that could cause all sorts of problems like melting pistons and such like. So be careful if you're thinking about doing that, make sure that the car is cooled properly and there are no cooling problems and no overheating problems with the engine if you're gonna tune an i4. And also the i4 is turbocharged. Apart from my daily driver, the Abarth, I don't like blown engines. I don't like turbocharged engines. I just don't like that dynamic. I prefer the power to be linear rather than, a, uh, rather than any latency. And I'm sure the latency is reduced and, and uh, you know, people who like turbocharged, they like that sort of configuration. I just don't. And the V6, um, a V6 supercharger, a supercharger on top of the engine is linear. Um, if you don't understand the difference between a supercharger and a turbo, um, a supercharger drives straight off the crankshaft. So in effect, it creates compressed air. It pushes it into the top of the engine, whereas turbos run off the exhaust as turbines off the exhaust. So you have to have the engine emissions. So you have to have the exhaust emissions up to a certain velocity to spin up the turbines uh, to actually get the compressed air pushing into the top of the engine to actually give you that boost. Whereas with um, a supercharger, it's linear, it drives straight off the crankshaft, so you've got the boost straight away. So it's linear flow, there's no latency, or there shouldn't be any latency. Now, the different characteristics that you, that you get are with the turbocharged engine, you get a, a turbocharged whine, which you'll notice from, from turbocharged supercars or other cars that you would have heard. With a supercharger, you also get a whine, but it's a supercharger whine, it's, it's different. And in my opinion, it's a cooler sound, but again, it's, it's each to their own, really, with regards to the sounds. Uh, but I prefer the linear power delivery. So I'm gonna go for V6 Supercharge. Uh, with regards to the transmission gearbox, in my opinion, there's only one option, especially with the first edition, you, own, um, you get a, a, an option of six-speed manual or six-speed automatic. 
Now the six speed automatic isn't a double clutch system. It's one of the old uh, slip clutch systems. Um, one of the old um, one of the old automatic transmission systems. So <clears throat> when the old design automatic transition systems. So it's not a dual clutch. So it's not going to be flappy paddle dual clutch. Um, I don't know how it's going to be operated. Um, I think there's going to be, um, from what I'm understanding, you're going to have a gear lever there in the auto boxes um, and you'll have flappy paddles to change the gear, but it won't be a dual clutch in the first edition models when you choose an i4. So um, this is why also people will be choosing six speed manual. And I want a manual anyway. I want for this car. I want a manual for the car. I've played around with a manual, as you will have seen on the video. If you haven't seen that, then please check out my, my Amira playlist and you'll see the uh, the walkthrough and run through of the Amira that we performed at Goodwood. And you'll see there that the gear shift is like a short shift and it's a sweet gearbox. It's a really sweet gearbox. So I'm going to choose the six speed manual gearbox. And with regards to the chassis, now most people, unless they're buying this car for a track car, are going to be used picking the touring suspension pack. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm going to be choosing the sport suspension pack. Now, why am I choosing the sport suspension suspension pack? Now, I spoke with Gavan, the, one of the chief designers and chief architects of the Amira at Goodwood, I had quite an extensive conversation with Gavan. And in effect, um, he, you know, I talked about the different cars I've driven uh, for the channel and you know myself personally off, off channel, off camera. And he said, if you're used to a 458 and if you're used to scudder rear suspension, then you want the support suspension on the Amira. Um, the, the touring suspension is really for people who aren't used to that sort of sporty setup and want the old style, old style, I mean, it's a lovely ride, but the, the, um, the sort of touring pack Amira ride. Um, now I know that it's been people that have been saying the twos and throws of the difference between the touring pack and the, and the, and the sports pack with regards to the suspension setup and people have been showing preferences with regards to the, the reviews that have already come out, um, airing more on the touring side. Um, but there is a difference and it's it's a, invariably a subtle difference with regards to the setup. Again, having spoken to Gavin, I have an appreciation of that. But it's enough of a difference to make it more of a sporty feel, more of a responsive feel. And the, the steering and the, and the responsiveness of the 458 that I'm used to is fast. Um, and I, I want that setup. I want that. I want to retain that setup with with this with this. Um, I want to retain that setup with this sports car with the Amira sports car. So that's what I'm going for. Hopefully, I'm correct. But you've got to go with what you perceive is right, and you've got to go with your volition. So I'm going to go with sports setup. Now, if we move across to the paint. Now, as I've detailed earlier, this was the biggest problem. This was this caused the biggest angst. If we go with dark with ant, then it just looks black. It's it's just not vibrant enough. So, um, the color that we're going for is can you can you guess? Put in the comments if you if you guessed it right. Be honest. Heffel yellow. As you can see there, just looking there, I haven't changed any other configuration. You can see. It's vibrant, you know, it looks cool and there, and there is a tinge of tangerine in it. There is a tinge of orange tangerine, um, which you can see close up. You can see it a little bit here on the configurator, but you can see it when you're close up with the car and it looks really cool. So it's a, it is a great configuration option. So what we're going to do is choose helpful yellows, the body color, go back into the paint options again. Now with regards to the black pack, if it's set on the lower black pack at the moment, which in effect means uh, the seal, the seal covers uh, and the end caps, etc., are black, and a few other cues like you have the black section in the middle of the of the door mirrors, etc. Um, but I think choosing the full black pack, which in effect gives you the black roof as well, and some various other bits and pieces on the black option, I think it looks really cool with yellow. I think the full black pack really, really shows it through. So we're going to choose the full black pack. And again, I uh, hear I'm going to, it might configure it. No, it's not, or is it? No, I'm going to have to flip between daylight again and then flip back again to the sunlight option. As you can see there, it really breaks the car up. It, it really looks cool. Um, some 458 Italias have a black roof and it's that sort of similar look. It makes the car look slimmer and it makes it look cooler. It gives it a better presence on the road, which I think is really cool and it will come across really well on camera. So we've gone for Heffel Yellow and we've gone for the black full black pack. Now, if we go to wheels, a lot of people uh, will be choosing the diamond cut wheels. Now, we're not going to move. We're not, not going to choose the diamond cut wheels. We're going to go for the silver ultra lightweight V-spoke silver wheels. Now, 
with regards to this setup, it's got to be silver wheels. You know, if you choose black wheels, which I don't think, yeah, yeah, you can choose black wheels, but black wheels would just not, they would just not ping on camera. They would just not look cool. Um, let's see if it actually does show the black wheels. Now I'm going to have to flip between the sunlight option and then the and the, the daylight option and the sunlight option. As you can see there, it hides the wheels. It just doesn't show it discernible. It just, it looks a bit chavvy to, 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 to coin a phrase or to, or to you know, to, to um, try and describe it in, in some some form. It just doesn't look cool. It looks chavvy and it just isn't a good look for the car. So we're gonna choose the silver ultra lightweight V-spoke forged alloy wheels. You can see there, look at the difference. It just zings, it really, really, it really zings. It really, really shows the separation between the wheels and, and it, it brings up that yellow again. It shows a good separation between the yellow. So it's a great color contrast. And there isn't a vast amount of options you can choose with this first edition because you have to take um, a lot of the a lot of the already pre-configured options, which I've already talked about, which which are good options anyway. But the options you can choose are cool anyway. You know, it, it, it's actually quite good what they've done with regards to configuration and the options you can choose. So I really like these this wheel option. And to be and to be honest and to be fair, um, my son chose these wheels, and I think he's right. You know, silver is very cool and silver is very much back in for wheels. There was a fad for black and people are still choosing black, um, but silver is very much back in. And it's a classic look, bright silver, it's a classic look. Um, and it's just right, it's the right option for this car for sure. Now with regards to the calipers, it's already defaulted to black anyway. It, if I was going for dark verdant, then I would have chosen yellow. But if you choose yellow, as I, as I have done here and just get it to update, you see, because the yellow isn't an exact match with the yellow of the of the bodywork of the car, it clashes, and that just looks awful. Um, it's just not a good option to choose that. So you've got to go for a separation to give contrast, and a way to go contrast probably grey gives a bit of a contrast, but um, it, it it doesn't look good. So grey silver gives you a bit of a contrast. I'll just show you the the silver option, so you can see the difference here. You take it back again to sunlight. You can see here, the, the, the silver, it just doesn't look right. I mean, here it looks white, but I'm sure it would look more silver than that. But it just doesn't look right. Um, it needs more of a stark contrast and it needs to align really with the wheel and with the black pack um, and with the black pack elements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose black for the calipers. And we bring it back here to the as we bring it back here to the black option, you can see there it looks super cool, especially with the Lotus yellow insignia in the centers of the wheels. That really separates, you've got three, 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 you've got three different colors there. You've got the silver of the wheels, the vibrant silver of the wheels. You've got the yellow in Lotus insignia in the center of the wheels, and you've got the black calipers uh, with the silver stroke white lettering on the black calipers, uh, Lotus lettering. It looks cool, it looks great, fantastic option, and, and that is a very, very cool option. So that's the exterior configuration of the car. That's set, that's the exterior configuration of the car. Now, let's move across to the interior. Now with the interior, you've got various different options to choose. We could choose, in effect, we could choose any of those interiors and it would sort of work, but there's certain colors that just will work with the yellow a lot better. Um, I could choose a tan interior with the yellow, as you can see here, um, but it just, it's just not quite right. It just doesn't look right. It, it, if, you look, if, you, if you saw this car with a tan interior, it just wouldn't look right. And, I, and very, very few people are gonna spec that op those options. That um, Very few people are gonna configure the car that way. So, and if you choose a red interior, you know, it just, it just looks chavvy um, with a red interior with a, with a yellow out external color. It just doesn't look right. So what we've chosen, and there's various different black options, what we've chosen is black. Now you can go for black Al Alcantara with gray stitch. Um, in effect, you've got 50% Alcantara and 50% leather when you choose this option. It, says, it just says Alcantara, but it isn't. It's 50% leather, 50% Alcantara. So you've got the lower section of the dash, for example, is Alcantara, and the upper, upper section of the dash is leather. And you've got those cues throughout the interior of the car. Now, we, so we could go for black Alcantara with gray stitch. We can go for black Alcantara with red stitch. Again, this is a mix between Alcantara and leather, not just Alcantara. Or we can go for black Alcantara and yellow stitch. Now, 
obviously that's the option. Black Alcantara with yellow stitch because the yellow stitching ties in with the external bodywork color and of course the, the Lotus logo as well. So it brings in that yellow into the interior of the car and gives you that slight amount of contrast with that black on the interior just to make it zing a bit on the inside and bring it up a bit, bring, bring, the, bring the interior color scheme up a little bit. And these sort of cues, they make a lot of difference with regards to the interior of a car, make a lot of difference. With regards to steering wheel, we've got two options. We've got black leather trimmed steering wheel, or we've got black Alcantara steering wheel. Now, this is personal choice. Obviously, all of it's personal choice, but this is very much personal choice. Either of these options would work. Me personally, I've got used to the leather steering wheel in the 458 and in my bath. I'm gonna go for a black leather steering wheel. For me personally, I prefer it, but either of those options really works well. And by the way, some people have noticed, some people will have noticed that on the Alcantara steering wheel, on some configurations, you have the yellow tab, the yellow tape or leather strip that goes over the top um, as a marker, as a center marker on the steering wheel. That isn't configurable on the first option, it's configurable on the base edition i4 option later on. And I think it's on the automatic dual clutch system for the i4 downstream. And that was the information I got from Lotus from speaking with the, the, the Lotus people when I was at uh, Goodwood. So it's not an option on the first edition, even though you can see there actually shows a slot for it, a little slot available here for it. You can't actually option that. You could actually do it afterwards. You can do it aftermarket. I'm sure that you could get somebody to put that a, a yellow, yellow leather strip in there. Maybe that would be something that we will go for uh, separately later on but so uh, you can't actually choose as an option for the first edition. So we're gonna go for the black leather trimmed steering wheel. Now, one of the things I just remembered is that with regards to the tires, I didn't, when I was choosing, when I was discussing the wheels and brakes, I didn't talk about the tires. It actually defaults to Goodwood Eagle F1 Supersport tires. I'm gonna stay with that configuration again. Having spoken with Gavan again at Goodwood, he recommended that I go with the Goodyear Eagle tires. He, um, with regards to Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2, they're really track tyres and they're not that great in the rain. And this car, we're going to be driving it all year round. So we want it to be able to um, be, be able to hold the road, obviously, in the rain and in, in good weather as well. So we're going to go for the Goodyear F1 Supersport tyres. And also these Supersport tyres, if there is a little bit too much harshness in the, in the sport suspension, then this will ease it off a bit because there's more cushioning in the tires as well. There's, they've got, the sidewalls have got more give than the, than the Pilot Sport Cup 2s. The Pilot Sport Cup 2s really are racing tire. They're, they're okay for the road, but only in the dry. Now, moving to the other options, we've got the option for Home Link. So this is, as its details are, a wireless control system for preset operation of garage doors, garage doors, etc. So in effect, it's a wireless option that you can have um, within a wireless transceiver that you can have built into the car so that you can configure it to automatically open your, your automated door. So I could configure it, say, for example, to automatically open up my Hallman garage door. Well, I don't want that. I'm concerned that those sort of things may be able to be hacked um, and give people the option. I mean, the, the, the wireless codes are automatically changing all the time, so they are very secure, these Hallman doors and, and all these automated type doors. But I prefer to actually use the remote control, which I've got on my on my keychain for the 45A. And it's no bliss or blade. You know, I can I'm a few hundred yards away from the garage door. I can press the garage door open button, and the garage door is pretty much open by the time I've I've got the car up the driveway. So it's no no issue. And I, I'm always spending time on whether it be this car or the 45A, um, cleaning it before it goes back into the garage or wherever it will be stored anyway. So um, it's uh, it's no issue. Um, with regards to having to having to need the garage door automatically open. So I'm not choosing the home link option. With regards to the vehicle tracker, I'd like to choose, I will be putting a tracker on it, but I'll be choosing my own tracker. So watch this space because I'll be going through the configuration of that tracker uh, later on with, when we've got the mirror. So I will be putting a tracker on the car, but it won't be the default vehicle tracker because I want to choose that option. I had no choice with a 458. It came with the Vodafone uh, tracker system. So um, that's the system that I put live and that's the system that protects my 458. But on this, on this um, vehicle tracker default option, the Lotus vehicle tracker or the third party that Lotus use, I'm not gonna go with that. So we're gonna leave that unselected. And then with regards to the privacy glass, now this privacy glass option is just this, this quarter panels at the back. 
That's all it is. It's not privacy glass for the, for the passenger and for the driver's windows, or obviously for the rear window. Um, now you can, you've got to be careful about putting tinted glass or over tinting glass on, on windows anyway nowadays because it's illegal to go over a certain percentage. I believe that you can have up to 33%, but you can't go higher than that, especially on, on, the, on the side screens on the front. I think it's even, even, uh, even brighter. You've got to have even clearer. You've got to have a screen. But these quarter panels, in effect, this privacy glass it only relates to these quarter panels. And what would you see if you're looking through those quarter panels? You'll see into the rear of the car to see the engine. Why would you not want to see that? You know, it's not like having that privacy is going to suddenly stop people from seeing into the car and seeing you, um, because uh, that isn't where the privacy glass that isn't where the privacy glass is configured. It's just for these rear quarter panels. So. Why would you have it, in my opinion anyway, why would you have its privacy glass? You want it clear so you can see through into the engine compartment so you can see the engine. You know, at the end of the day, the engine's on display there for the rear and for these side quarter panels. So have it, let's have it on display, you know, just for the sake of those little quarter panels. So um, I'm setting that to none. So privacy glass is set to none. So there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the configuration of our Lotus Amira and that is the configuration that we've got locked in and that is the build that we're going for. If I just f flick it so you can see the, the video roll through now. Now you'll see what I mean here when I talk about this being very discernible on camera when compared with the dark Verdant option. This is bright, it zings, it really, really shows on camera. You're going to see that car from miles away. And it's, it's a beautiful configuration. It's a great setup. Um, and the dark Verdant with a tan interior would be great to go for, for a personal love heart option. But this is definitely the right option with regards to the channel. You know, even when you're watching the car from a distance going across the bridge there, it's so discernible. Um, it's very, very obvious what the car is and it's going to come across great on camera. So this, this is going to look really, really cool for you guys. And I hope you hope you really like this options. I hope you really like this configuration that we've set up. So let me know in the comments below, actually. Let me know what you think of this configuration setup. Do you think I should have gone for Dark Verdant? Do you, do you think I should have gone for Cine Seneca Blue, for example, or maybe the red option? Um, let me know in the comments below um, if you think that we've gone with the right color configuration here for the channel. I think it looks really super cool um, and I think it's going to really work well and we won't know until we actually collect the car um, in um, which should be towards the latter part of this year again dates are always slipping so even though we've you know we've been told a date you don't really know yet to be honest it may slip again but hopefully not hopefully we should be getting this car towards the end of the year and that's the options ladies and gentlemen that is our Lotus Amira configuration it's cool and that's going to be a cool car for the channel if you like the video please give it a thumbs up give it a like great future content to come including emira content thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video